Following progression on crizotinib and the identification of an L1196M mutation, this patient was then initiated on brigatinib at a dose of 90 milligrams per day uh, for one week. The patient did well during that time with no respiratory issues and was dose escalated to 180 milligrams of brigatinib. This patient achieved a partial response in both the lung lesions and in the CNS. She experienced some fatigue, but was able to maintain some exercise. And importantly, her response was still ongoing at 16 months. So in thinking about this particular patient with an L1196M resistance mutation, um, she really has several options. Um, seritinib, brigatinib, and lorlatinib have all shown in vitro activity against L1196M, and clinical data to support the use of that those drugs against that particular mutation. And so all of those would be a reasonable choice. When thinking about treatment following crizotinib, um, brigatinib has the longest progression-free survival of approximately 15 to 16 months, whereas seritinib and electinib uh, after crizotinib only have progression-free survival in the range of about six to eight months. And so I think brigatinib is a very reasonable choice here. This patient has brain metastasis, and so brigatinib is a very good option for a patient uh, with progression in both the brain um, and the lungs um, and, and has a very long progression-free survival. We know that brigatinib has good potency across a number of ALK resistance mutations, including L1196M. Um, we know that in the clinical setting post crizotinib that it has um, uh, very significant activity in terms of response rate and progression-free survival, and importantly also CNS activity and long progression-free survival specifically related to CNS metastases. Um, and so that's uh, um, been backed up now by multiple trials uh, post uh, crizotinib. Electinib and seritinib both have activity against several crizotinib resistance mutations. Now in this particular case the patient had already received electinib so using electinib again probably doesn't make much sense. Um, seritinib has activity against L1196M and some mutations that are specific to electinib like I1171 and so that might be a good option for particular ALK mutations. But again, if we look at just the clinical data in terms of progression-free survival and intracranial activity, brigatinib really stands out compared to seritinib and electinib post-crizotinib.